Hollywood's history is as colorful and intriguing as the movies themselves. Some are tales of crime, corruption, death and murder, and of course its fair share of scandals. Ever since the beginning of the film industry, the public has been fascinated not just by the movies, but more so with the personal lives of their favorite stars. One of the other interesting aspects of Hollywood is anything that has to do with the supernatural. It seems as though some of these famous stars weren't ready to let go of the spotlight, which probably explains why they continue to make their presence felt well after their deaths. One of which happens to be the beautiful blonde bombshell, Marilyn Monroe. There have been many conspiracy theories on the cause of Monroe's untimely death, the most accepted one being an apparent drug overdose. But the fact of the matter is she died way before her time, which could be a reason why her spirit continues to haunt her former home. Marilyn Monroe died on August 5, 1962. She was only 36 years old. Her body was found in her Brentwood home, and at the time of her death, Monroe was going through depression and substance abuse for several years, and hadn't completed a film since The Misfits in 1961. Monroe spent her last day, Saturday, August 4th, at home, accompanied by publicist Patricia Newcomb, her housekeeper Eunice Murray, photographer Lawrence Schiller, and psychiatrist Ralph Greenson. At Greenson's request, Murray stayed overnight to keep Marilyn company. At approximately 3 a.m. the next day, Murray noticed that Marilyn had locked herself in the bedroom and was unresponsive. Murray summoned Greenson, who arrived soon after and pulled the bedroom window to get inside, finding Marilyn deceased. Some say she accidentally overdosed on medication, but others believe the cause of Monroe's death was covered up and that the Kennedys had Marilyn murdered to silence her regarding her involvement with John F. Kennedy. However, it does seem fishy that the last person she ever spoke to before dying was JFK. It is also quite suspicious that Robert Kennedy was seen near Marilyn's home the night of her death, according to a witness. Some even speculate that it was housekeeper Eunice Murray who killed her, because the day before she died, Marilyn had fired her. She was even seen doing laundry after Monroe's death, which some claim she was hiding evidence. Here is Murray in her own words. I couldn't, as a layman, couldn't describe her as depressed. But I know she had many worries, and this particular day she was not lively and enthusiastic. She was very quiet. Was she in the mood of a person who would later deliberately take her own life? I doubt that very much. And she had told me that one of the very first things to warn me that if she ta takes sedation, which she did every night, sometimes she's apt to forget and would take a second dose too soon. And this is what she had to be very careful about. Ever since Monroe's passing, friends of hers claim they have felt her presence inside her home, especially in the bedroom. They have also seen her in the backyard, sitting by the pool, and other various parts of her former home. Marilyn left us far too early but it's quite clear her spirit never left us at all. One of the most tragic underworld figures of his time has to be Benjamin Bugsy Siegel, the man who started Las Vegas. This mobster has long said to be haunting Virginia Hill's former rental home on North Linden Drive in Beverly Hills. For those not in the know, Virginia Hill was an organized crime figure in the 1940s, dubbed as a mob queen because of her ties to several gang leaders. She was the lover of notorious gangster, Bugsy Siegel. At the time of their relationship, investors were very upset at Siegel about the six million dollars they had invested, as the Flamingo Hotel and Casino was a financial disaster when it first opened its doors. Reportedly, the mob demanded that Siegel make good on their losses, but what they didn't know was that Bugsy had also been skimming from the construction funds and from the gambling profits, and Virginia Hill had been busy hiding the money in Swiss bank accounts. Siegel knew that he was in big trouble, but he thought they had given him an extension to get the Flamingo turned around. On June 20th, 1947, Siegel was sitting in the living room of Virginia Hill's mansion while she was away in Europe. He was reading the newspaper when suddenly bullets tore through the front window. One of them shattered the bridge of his nose and exited his left eye, while the other one entered his right cheek and blew out the back of his neck. Authorities later found his right eye on the dining room floor more than 15 feet from his body. Bugsy Siegel, one of the most infamous and feared gangsters, was dead. Ever since Siegel's murder, witnesses have seen the apparition of a man running and ducking across the living room of the mansion, only to disappear as suddenly as he came. A psychic who was brought in to investigate the house claimed that the image was the residual presence of Bugsy, 
imprinted on the place in his last desperate moments before death. As the years have passed, Bugsy's ghostly presence here has faded somewhat, but his spirit will never rest in peace. Queen of Comedy Lucille Ball, who was most famous for her role on the I Love Lucy show, passed away in 1989. And at the time of her death, she was living in a sprawling mansion on North Roxbury Drive in Beverly Hills, which she purchased in 1954 with her first husband, Desi Arnaz. Her second husband, Gary Morton, sold the property a few years later after her passing. The house was given a major makeover since her death, probably something that was not to Balls' satisfaction, as her spirit has been said to manifest itself there. The first reported sighting of Lucille Ball occurred while a friend drove past the home. His anonymous report states that Lucille was standing inside the property, looking at him through the fence. She looked frustrated, likely because at the time her home was in the process of renovation. While this was the first of the occurrences, it certainly would not be the last. The new owners had reported broken windows, voices from an unused attic, and different objects unexplainably moving from one place to another. It seems that Lucille Ball simply couldn't leave her door in public, and the public has no wish to be rid of her. Ball will forever live on in the hearts of those who still love Lucy, and apparently in the attic of her old home. On June 16, 1959, Superman died at 1.59 a.m. Not the comic book character, of course, but the man who personified the real Superman for an entire generation of television fans. Faster than a speeding bullet, able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Yes, it's Superman. Strange visitor from another planet who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. George Reeves, it was discovered, was not faster than a speeding bullet after all. To this day, the truth behind actor Reeves' death is still shrouded in mystery. The original Superman died of a gunshot wound to the head, allegedly pulling the trigger himself. His death came just days before he was to marry socialite Lenore Lemon. It's said that the night he died, he was drunk and embroiled in a fight with his fiance at his home in Beverly Hills. Friends who were also present that night claimed he then stormed upstairs and a gunshot was heard from his bedroom a few minutes later. Many believe that the story was inaccurate and that foul play was involved. After Reeves' death, realtors attempted to sell the house to settle the actor's estate. Unfortunately though, they had trouble. Occupants would not stay long because they would report inexplicable noises in a bedroom upstairs where George had died. When they would go to investigate the sounds, the room wasn't the way they had left it. Oftentimes, the bedding would be torn off, clothing would be all over the floor, and some reported the odor of gunpowder in the air. One tenant also reported that his German shepherd would stand by the doorway of the bedroom and would bark furiously, <coughs> as though he could see something his owners could not. The death of Superman will forever remain a mystery, but one thing is certain, he always makes his presence known in the home where he took his last breath. Before Marilyn Monroe, there was Jean Harlow, who many in Hollywood have dubbed the original blonde bombshell. Harlow married MGM studio executive Paul Byrne, but it was a tumultuous wedding though, as Byrne was rumored to have been physically abusive towards her. While Byrne may have been intellectually superior to Harlow, he wasn't much to look at in the looks department. Regardless, he gained a reputation in Hollywood as a sensitive and compassionate man, which was a rare thing, and he began to be called Hollywood's father confessor. Byrne was also never much for the public life. He was something of a mystery man, especially to those who craved a spotlight and the lure of Hollywood's nightlife. So when he began appearing in local night spots with Gene Harlow, no one thought much of it. They assumed that it could never last, and soon, things began to change. As the weeks passed, Byrne looked less and less happy, becoming pale, distraught, and almost haggard. He didn't tell anyone what was bothering him, but that didn't stop the rumors from spreading. One of the rumors stated that they were having money problems and Gene didn't like the house they were living in and wanted to sell it. Byrne refused and argued with Gene. The house was located in the midst of five acres of ground in Beverly Hills' Benedict Canyon. On September 5th, 1932, just four months after his marriage to Gene Harlow, <laughs> Paul Byrne was found shot to death in the house. He had been shot in the head with a .38 caliber revolver which was laying by his side. It was said that Jean Harlow loved Byrne so much that when his body was discovered, she too attempted suicide. Even though her attempt was not successful, 
Harlow's days were numbered. She died five years later at the age of 26. Many questions remain unanswered regarding the death of Paul Byrne. Could this be why his ghost is still haunting the Harlow house? Perhaps, but many believe that Byrne's first outwardly appearance in the house was actually meant as a warning. It was an advanced premonition for another beautiful blonde actress that if she had heeded it, might have saved her life. That woman's name was Sharon Tate. In 1969, Sharon would fall victim to one of the most savage slayings in Hollywood history. But three years before she was brutally murdered at the hands of the Charles Manson family, she glimpsed the ghostly image of the horrific fate that awaited her. Sharon was a struggling actress, hoping to make a name for herself when she met Jay Sebring, who would soon become known as the premier men's hairstylist in Hollywood. The two dated for three years and even announced their engagement at one point, but Sharon broke it off with them in 1966 when she met her future husband, Roman Polanski. The breakup was not bitter and the two of them stayed very close friends. In fact, it was Jay who was keeping Sharon company at the Cielo Drive house while Roman was away filming. And it was Jay who died trying to protect her from the Manson clan. Jay lived in Benedict Canyon, in the former home of Gene Harlow. He loved the house but was always concerned about its past. He knew the stories about Paul Byrne's death. But he also learned that two people had drowned in the swimming pool as well. He shrugged off the idea that the house was cursed, but perhaps he shouldn't have. One night in 1966, Sharon stayed alone at Jay's house. Unable to sleep, so she stayed awake in James' room with all the lights on. She was very uncomfortable. Although she couldn't explain why, she felt funny and was frightened by every little sound she heard. Suddenly a person that she described as a creepy little man came into the bedroom. What happened next would be especially chilling in light of events to come. Sharon started down the stairs, but halfway down she froze in shock. There was a figure tied to the staircase post at the bottom of the steps. She couldn't tell if this was a man or a woman. However, she could clearly see that the figure's throat had been cut. Then the apparition vanished. Shaken, Sharon went into the living room to get herself a drink, but couldn't find where Jay kept alcohol. She felt an inexplicable urge to press on a section of the bookcase, and it opened to reveal a hidden bar. Not thinking, she tore away a piece of wallpaper at the base of the bar as she nervously poured herself a drink. In the morning, Sharon was convinced that the whole episode had been a terrible nightmare, until she saw the wallpaper that had been torn away from the bar. She had indeed seen the ghost of Paul Byrne, and at that time, had annoyingly seen a vision of her fate. 